Welcome to Poets from the Neighborhood. I am Viruja R. And I'm Sandy Coomer. We hope you'll enjoy the poems we'll be reading today. Poems written by your friends and neighbors. The first poem is by Brittany Macaron. It's called Remembrance, and it's written in the style of Anglo-Saxon poetry. The waves of the sea Wild playground of whales, smashing into the sand, spraying onto that precious land. Memories of a distracted mind that distresses and worries. Remembering the years long ago of youth outgrown. This strip of turtle's nest connected to travel and times of family. A beach once deserted and untamed, dominion of wild horses, now joined with joy-bringing memories that mean the most to this soul at a turning point in their story of life. A spirit embarking on a serious journey, far from the simplistic periods of before, no longer playing in that precious crab den but participating in a higher purpose. The soul carrier working and aging while the mind yearns and waits to see once more that vision of tranquility and emotion forever etched in the eye of the heart and mind. The home of fish and freedom fervently calling this lost friend home. The next poem, titled Anthem, by Susie Margaret Ross, from her book titled Separate Caves for Sleep. Mockingbirds rejoicing, Buddha laughing in the garden, bells ringing in the trees. I wrote the next poem, and it's called For Joseph, Homeless, Preparing for a Job Interview. Why say broken when you mean temporarily lost? Such is the gift of fragments. There's a way to recover, rebuild. Why say empty when you mean less than full, when you mean hands open and ready to wait? Don't you know how long it takes for anything to happen, anything that matters anyway? That's why it's good to know how to hold your breath. And why be still when the body is jumping out of its skin to find something worthy of love? Why wait when the sky unfolds and rain rushes over you and you feel a certain kinship with the ragged and the wet? It makes sense. Considering what you've done to stand here, your clothes pressed seamless as the surface of a lake, your face a reflection of glassy sky. Why say afraid? And why say unlucky? And why say you're just too tired to care anymore and the world can throw itself against the rocks? When you mean that spark you hold inside you won't go out, no matter how many times you shiver against the lonely harvest of darkness. It stands with its feeble light beating the shadows back with a stick, then rests at your feet, flickering like always, like always. The Third of a Cup, poem by Alison Cleaves. Every week I rummage through my pantry, looking for the unwanted or forgotten. I pull out all of the bruised and barely breathing from my refrigerator to make something out of nothing. With every turn of my spatula, I add another ingredient that a lesser woman would have readily thrown away. Soft apples, Black bananas and withered blueberries bear witness 
and convert with just a third of a cup of sugar, a cup of flour and a stick of margarine. I couldn't be more tired, but I keep beating three eggs in a bowl. I would give you the last teaspoon of apple juice or baking soda inside of me if it would bring you the moon and the stars. But they will only come to you when the smell of cinnamon saturates the air. With every passing day, my sun is setting. My brilliant blazing orange dulls because it's better used for pumpkin spiced cookies. I keep going, scraping the sides of the bowl until there's none left, wondering how many times someone can rise up resurrected and reborn. I think to myself, just ask the strawberry banana bread baking in the oven at 350 degrees. Rolling in Mud by S. R. Lee. Squishy brown on short brown summer coat, soft stick Globs still cling as he eases out of his stall, ungroomed. No shoes, no halter, free in the big field to roll in mud again. Paw at the shallow pond for splashes, quicker and nicker to a neighbor's field. Old and free he lives. Cared for but not bothered, coat in winter, fly mask in summer, grain offered twice a day if he chooses to come up for it. Eccentric as he pleases, mud, splashes, salt block, good grass. While the sun and rain dodge behind or down from clouds, the sun overcame today but may prevail tomorrow. Warmth moderate, birds vocal, Shared freedoms with the old humans who keep few schedules. Pour out grain only when the rain lets up. Travel through the pasture on pleasant days. Watch from windows otherwise. Humans also choose eccentricities. Poems to write. Food to buy. Control time to desires though the house is more complicated than the barn, and the need to run errands more complicated than a simple, ample field. The nuisance of clothing complicates much beyond a natural hair-covered body. Still, the elder humans, like the elder horses, have great choices. To sit at the computer, Wallowing in words is as wonderful as to a horse is rolling in the mud. The next poem, titled Waves, written by me. What's with the tickle of sand grains that melts away right under our feet? into the bubbly arms reaching out from the blues of the depths, leaving all or no traces behind, playful ocean waves full of joy. Thank you for watching Poets from the Neighborhood. We hope you'll join us again soon.